singing Feliz Navidad. Really, really touched them. I know a lot of a lot of us older people, you know, we see all of that going, yeah. Uh, but let me tell you, the younger people and those of us who want to be younger, we thought it was pretty neat. <laughs> a lot of times, uh, things in church kind of, our traditions, begin to uh, kind of get in the way of, of the truth. I did a lot of studies and things on church history and stuff, and I, I found that uh, when churches wanted to start bringing the piano in, there was a lot of opposition. That's, that's the saloon. Well, here it is. Even when uh, they wanted to bring in chalkboards in Sunday school classrooms, they didn't want to do that. On opposition, we we look back on that going. What? I want to read you a, a, a thing on the uh, ABA, the American Baptist Association, has a bulletin board on the computer, and a lot of missionaries post their mission reports and a lot of prayer requests and things. And then sometimes people have a question, and uh, this is from uh, the pastor at uh, Bethel Missionary. Brother, are we recording this? Because I want to be on record, all right? I want to make sure we're recording, all right. Because there's some going not like this. <laughs> uh, Pastor Missionary, uh, Bethel Missionary Baptist Church posted this question. We are looking for some insight into the theory that scriptural baptism cannot be accomplished if a church uses a baptistry. We just came across this issue with a missionary Baptist church refusing to grant a letter because we do not baptize in a river. Anyone ever heard of this and what is it based upon? Okay. We'd be in trouble, wouldn't we? Now, <laughs> I want to post an answer to that so bad. So I thought I'd go ahead and say it. <laughs> I believe that the, the church that is looking at that is using 
John the Baptist baptizing in the Jordan River. So my question to that church would be, which river is acceptable? Do they have to go to the Jordan River? Because I know there's a bunch of people that believe that you have to walk around a particular black rock once in your lifetime to go to paradise. There's another bunch of people that believe that you have to go and bathe in a particular river called the Ganges, which is in India, and if I was you, I wouldn't get near it. It's a terrible thing. <laughs> you talking about pollution. But they believe you have to bathe in the Ganges. So which river, which body of water is water? <laughs> And uh, I think that someone has taken the scriptures in the wrong way. Uh, I know that this church, prior to the baptistry being installed and everything, they went down. We have photos of many, maybe many of you that were baptized in the river. And that's certainly fine. I am, that's great. I was baptized in a baptistry. According to that church, I'm unscriptural. And many of you. <laughs> Swimming pool. Oh, how dare you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the symbolism of the death, burial, and resurrection of the individual in Christ. All right? And we do that as a personal testimony of our devotion to Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And that we are following him. It's an example to us as well as everyone in attendance and to Satan himself. And so anyway, I wanted to share that with you that uh, there are people out there that do that. I, if I posted a, a thing on that bulletin board, I'm pretty sure that that church wouldn't read it because I've never heard of a, a, church, uh, com, a computer that runs off of kerosene because I got a feeling that uh, they don't have electricity either. I know that's wrong, but we have to bring correction where it's needed. Lord knows I've been corrected several times. So Anyway, that's enough of that. Turn away from Psalm 107. Psalm 107, I'm, I'm trying to do a little series uh, this month from the Psalms, and the theme of it is I cried, and then we see when we cry how he uh, is able to supply whatever we need, and today... I want us to look at he cried and he delivered in Psalm 107. Uh, again, we'll just read the first three verses. And if you're able, we ask you to stand in the honor of the reading of the Lord's word. Psalm 107, beginning in verse 1 down through verse 3. And the word of the Lord says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for delivering us. Just as you delivered, Heavenly Father, your chosen people from, from Egypt. Just as you delivered them, Lord, from captivity when they went in because of unbelief and uh, disobedience. And, and they were sent into captivity and to, into the Babylonian Empire and into the Assyrian Empire, Lord, throughout. And Lord, you returned them once again to their homeland, the land that you provided and are still providing. And we thank you for this. But Lord, you've also delivered us from the east, from the north, from the west, from the south. You've delivered us from our bondage of sin and brought us into this land of promise, this land, Lord, the land of, of belief and dedication and love. So Lord, this, this moment we ask that each heart and mind truly be open to receive your word that will nourish their hearts as they need to be nourished. But again, Lord, we thank you for all the blessings, especially of Jesus. In his precious name we ask and say it all. Amen. Thank you. Have a seat. When we're gathered, we see this here in these verses. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And that is a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thought that we should hold dear to our hearts, that his mercy endureth forever. We need mercy, amen, each and every one of us. We need mercy in our hearts. We need mercy upon our lives. 
because we've all have strayed. We, when we were in captivity of sin, and he broke that yoke of sin and brought us into his land of promise of forgiveness, we need to know that his mercy endures forever. In Psalm 106, verse 1, Praise ye the Lord, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Just as in 107, 106. I mean, it's repeated and repeated and repeated because we need to know that truly and hold that close to us, that his mercy endureth forever. Because, let's be honest, if you stand in front of a judge, you don't want justice. No, <laughs> you want mercy. And so that's what we have from God. We have mercy because the Lord Jesus has paid our sin debt. Just as if you were arrested for some crime and brought before a judge, and he says, all right, because of what you've done, you have to go to prison, and you're going to be locked away for years and years and years. And someone walks in and say, Your Honor, I'm going to serve for them. I'm going to stand in their place. I'm going to pay their price for what they've done. I'll take it. That's Jesus. That's exactly what Jesus has done for us. His mercy endures forever. In Isaiah 44, verse 22 through 24, I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgression. And as a cloud, thy sins return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O ye heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, ye lower parts of the earth. Break forth in the singing, ye mountains. O forest and every tree therein, for the Lord hath redeemed Jacob. <coughs> and glorified himself as, uh, in Israel. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that stretcheth abroad the earth by myself. You see, when we look at God and glory in His majesty and we see through His word a, a description of Him, and we see that and truly come to an understanding that He is God, not me, not us. No, He is God and His majesty endureth and His mercy endureth. And everything is based upon him and him alone. We should stand in awe. <clears throat> and we should stand and say, thank you, Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Just as baptism, as we were talking about, it's just a, a picture. It's just a, something that we can see and feel and, and participate in, absolutely. Participate in that, but that doesn't earn us salvation. That's just... Letting us know and everyone know that we have been saved. Because you, baptism without salvation is nothing but a bath. That's all that is. And it doesn't matter where you take it. It's just like when someone stands up, when the President of the United States stands up and addresses Congress, he's giving a speech. But to let Billy Graham stand up and address Congress, he's giving a sermon. Because God is the center of it. That's a big difference in a speech and a message. Big difference. Because Jesus has to be the center. Has to be. And gathered them, verse 3, and gathered them out of the land from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. We have all been gathered from our distant lands, our lands of sin, our bondage. Because each and every one of us from some capacity have been enslaved to, to sin. And sin is singular. I mean, when, when God talks about sin, he's talking about it all. And throughout scriptures, we have many different de explanations of what sin is. And it's a multitude of things. It's not just one thing. So we can all be guilty of different things, and it is sin in the eyes of God. In Psalm 106, 47, Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the heathen, to give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. I mean, that latter part, to give thanks. Why, why should we, what is our response in being gathered out of the land of bondage, out of sin? What is it to do? To give thanks unto thy holy name. To give thanks and praise to God for doing that. For healing us and helping us and forgiving us. Oh, that's the biggest praise right there is, is to really lift our hearts up 
and, and minds up to God and give him praise for his forgiveness. Just as it said uh, earlier, just like a cloud. You know, we've had days where it's beautiful blue skies. You know, like right now, many of us are shivering in here. Praise God. Others are not fanning, so they're saying, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I've heard it said, and I agree, you know, you can put a sweater on, but you don't want one coming off. Yeah. But when we go out the door, you know, what is going to get up to be 80, 90 degrees? This morning, my son woke up to 28 degrees in Kentucky, you know, and snow. And others up in uh, Minnesota, negative zero, you know. So put a sweater on. <laughs> It'll be all right. But we can go out with that blue sky and everything, and then we'll have a storm coming, and it gets cloudy. And what happens? We're separated between, uh, by the cloud, we're separated between the warmth of the sun and ourselves. And so that cloud brings that distress upon our, our lives. And rain, and wind, we're upset. Well, he said, that's sin. Sin separates us between us and the Son of God. Separates us and brings distress and uncomfort. But when that cloud is pushed away and that sunshine comes back down... Oh, we feel so good, warm. Well, when we have the forgiveness of God, when we go to God and that cloud of sin is separated, when it's done away with, cast as far as the east is to the west, and we have the Son of God shining back down into us and through us, then we have peace, love, and harmony with God and with one another. So when we cry unto him, he delivers us. Look at verse 4 through 9 in Psalm 107. We see that when we're scattered, certain things happen. Because verse 3 talks about how he brought us out. But look at verse 4. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. When they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Oh, my goodness. You know, this happens in this psalm, what he's referring to. It's not something that happened one time. This is something that happened repeatedly over and over again. I mean, we look at the history of Israel from the time they, they were in Egypt, and Moses went in, and God said, let my people go free. And they came out of that bondage of sin, and they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. It only took about an 11-day trip. But it took them 40, day, 40 years to make it. And it took them 40 years because of their disobedience to God. Now, we can do the same thing. I mean, we can wander around our own little mountain of discouragement until we finally want to realize what God would have us to do in our lives. We can have a short trip or a long journey. It's up to us. But when he led them out and they went in, we see in Joshua, the book of Joshua, how they went in and conquered the land. And then they had different turmoils. We have the judges, how the judges had to rise up and judge the nation and save them time and time again. Why? Because they kept falling into idolatry, kept getting away from God and doing what God would have them to do. Just live their life the way I say. Well, why shouldn't we live our life the way God says it? He's the one that gave us the life to begin with. Now, we can become scattered. We can be scattered all over the place. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. That's loneliness. That's loneliness. People will perish unless they call upon God. They're going to perish if they don't. In Psalm 106, 44 and 45, Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. 
And he remembered for them his covenant and repented according to the multitude of his mercies. There's that mercies again. You see, when we cry unto God, then he's going to remember, yes. Yes. It's not that he forgets. We're the ones who forget. If it didn't, why would we constantly repeat the same mistake over and over again? Well, we forgot about the pain there. And, well, I can do it this time, and we fall flat. See, being scattered around to wander about seeking physical protection and help. All right. Then they cried. Well, let's see. They wandered in the wilderness, verse 4, and saw their way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. You see, we do that with our lives. We wander around thinking we're having fun or doing something, and then we realize, wait a minute, I'm, I'm all alone here. And I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I've lost everything, I'm, I don't have what I need. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Now what did God promise the, the children of Israel when they went into that new land? A land flowing with milk and honey. Because they were hungry and they were thirsty and their soul fainted in them. Well, Jesus gives us that too. He gives us the, gives us the living water and the bread of life. It's up to us to receive it. He's offering it. Here it is. In Psalm 34, verse 10, the young lions, lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Again, I have to bring up the Apostle Paul. You look at his life. <laughs> yeah, he had a lot of good stuff, didn't he? He thought he did, even though he was beaten and shipwrecked and all that stuff thrown in jail countless times. He thought he would, you know, he, I, I think he would say, I have a pretty good life. Even though I do all this, and he was discouraged time and time again. Yeah, when he arrived in Rome, the people that met him at the dock, the Church of Rome, welcomed him, and, and, and he went on into uh, basically jail. But that, that encouraged him. Here's these people that had heard the word of God and had received salvation and they're meeting him and escorting him and, and, and ministering to him. And so that gave him encouragement. It always, it should and I would say it would. In Luke chapter one, verse 53, he hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. You see, those of us we look at ourselves as being financially poor, but there are a lot of rich people who are spiritually poor. And they're living wasted lives. And verse 8, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You see, when, when people see how we're living our lives openly, before everyone, living our lives joyfully, happily, they see that and they realize, irregardless of how much they finances they do or do not have, they see what's lacking in their lives through the joy and love that we have. And that draws them in, draws them to you. And you need to be ready to tell someone why you have that hope within you. And that's from the Word of God. So when we're scattered, He helps us. When we're battered, look at verse 10, 11, and 12. Of Psalm 107. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebel, rebelled against the words of God and content, contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore, therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. You see, others are battered uh, through their own earthly desires. We have people that are scattered, and a lot of the, that is that in their solitude and loneliness, that's emotional separation, emotional sin. Here, other people are battered because they're trying to grab and fulfill their life through earthly pleasures, and they can't do it. I mean, seeking after worldly pleasures, you only end up in darkness, and you feel as though chains of iron are holding you down. All right. 
such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death being bound in affliction and iron. It's like you just feel like you're just chained up. I can't move. And then we get used to it. We get used to the pain. We do. We get up every morning, well, there's that pain again, and we just get used to wearing it. It becomes a part of us. And if we don't have it, we start wondering, well, what's wrong? I don't hurt. <laughs> what part of me died last night? Yeah. Well, we, we, we shouldn't grow used to it. We need to, you know, if anyone who's, who walks around with pain in their body wants to be rid of it. But there are also so many of us who walk around with pain of the heart. And that is a heavy burden, but yet we feel like we're just chained to it. It's part of us. And it shouldn't be. And that, they're that way, or we're that way, because we rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Didn't want anything to do with it. In Proverbs 1, beginning of verse 24, Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel, and would none of my reproof, wouldn't have anything. I also will laugh at your calamity. Wouldn't that be terrible to have God do that? I've told you and told you, I'm not messing with you anymore. That would be a terrible thing. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you. That would be a terrible thing, wouldn't it? But look at God and how he how he treated Israel, his chosen people, when they continually rebelled against him in going into idolatry. Time after time after time, what did he do? I've had enough. You won't listen to me. Well, you just listen to Nebuchadnezzar over there in Babylon. And see, you want his counsel? Go ahead. Go ahead. Put them in their affliction. Use this unbeliever as his instrument. What? To get his people's attention. What do we need? What do we need? Do we need a, a government <laughs> to come down and tell us what to do? Or do we need God and follow and obey him? Never put anyone in God's place. Psalm 31, verse 10. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. How many of us have thought that? How many of us have in our own way reflected verse 10 of Psalm 31? For my life is spent with grief, and my years with sighing. Oh, oh woe is me. And my strength faileth because of mine iniquity. Mine. We have to take ownership of our problems. I've done this. This is me. I've done this to me. That's how I knew when I got out of that freezer that I found salvation in. When I crawled out of there and realized that I was the one who was pouring that liquor down my throat. Nobody was doing it to me. I did that. And by me doing that over and over and over, I caused this. Me. And I had to take ownership of that. And I had to say, I've had enough of that, Lord. But Lord, I can't do this. I need help, and I need your help to do it. And he forgave me of my sins, and he, he pulled that away from me. Slowly. Because I had to go through it. I had to experience that pain. I had to experience what I have done to my body, to my mind. I had to experience that and go through that and understand fully of my pain. But he was right there with me every step of the way. Whenever I felt weak, he lifted me up. Whenever I felt I just can't do this, his word spoke to me. He said, well, you just had Jesus as a crutch. Praise God. He held me up. I leaned on him heavily and still do. For my life is spent with grief and my years with sighing. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity. And my bones are consumed. Yeah, I had that. And occasionally I even feel like that. I let things happen around me that start affecting me. Get discouraged. Sometimes get flat out mad. Just want to go kick a mule. <laughs> 
But we have to remember how the Lord has saved us and brought us because when we cry, he delivers us. Because when we do that, we know that he is our Father, our Heavenly Father. Verse 13, Psalm 107. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. You see, unfortunately, that's when we do cry. We cry when we, Lord, I've just, I'm in so much trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands of sunder. He broke, broke them. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he hath broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. He just cut them in two. So what is, what is man's work? In the, when we look at these verses of this psalm, what is man's work? What is it that we're to do? We're to cry to God. That's our part. You know, it's like a dear friend of mine. Brother Marlon Gibson, he had a wonderful prayer. Lord save him. <laughs> and Lord save me. I mean, just Lord save him. Just a cry to God. A cry of despair, a cry of hope, however you want to word it. Lord help me. That's our part. That's our job. But what is God's work? What is it that he does? He saves. He saves. Verse 13, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. But if you don't cry, what's he going to do? Because if we don't cry unto him, if we don't acknowledge our problem, acknowledge our life, where we're at at this moment, if we don't acknowledge that to ourselves, how can we acknowledge that to him? Lord, help me. You know, it's just like the story a man told about his, his granddaughter. And his granddaughter, was, oh, man, she would get into everything, you know? You know, the twos and the threes. And they had a fire. I have to, I have to show you this. Or maybe the camera will pan. But they had a fire in their fireplace. And, boy, she wanted to go, oh, that's pretty. That's pretty. And she run over there, and oh my goodness, he right behind her. No, 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 no. Because she'd fall in a fire and get burned and get hurt. Boy, and she, she'd look at him, no, 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 you can't do that. No, just stay away from that. Right back. He right behind her, grabbing her. No, no, no. Well, like third or fourth time, he said, well, you know, no. Well, that hurt. You don't, don't do that. You know, pretty. He said, yeah, no, it's pretty, but no, you can't do that. And so she looked at it and felt the pain. Looked back at him. Take it. How many times have we said that to Jesus? Lord Jesus, just take me. Take me in your arms and hold me and secure Lord, be my father. Be my support. Be my strength. You see, God gives light, life, and liberty. Those three things are what even our Constitution, in a way, has said. But what do we say with Jesus? Lord, and that's what he gives. When anyone is freed from prison, and you see these people that were wrongly accused, a man I think was released from prison like 27 years or something, did not do the crime, and they finally proved that. No matter how many times he said, I didn't do it, they finally realized, well, the prosecuting attorney was wrong, the, you know, everybody was wrong. Somebody had it in on this guy. 20-something years, 27 years, I think. And they let him out. We're sorry. You didn't do it. All the news media is sticking microphones in their face and wanting to know what he's going to do about it. You know what he did? I forgive them. They can't wrap their head around that. But isn't that what Jesus has said to us? And he's freed us from prison. The prison of our sins, our iniquities, our transgressions. 
freed us from all that and forgiven us. And all he really wants us to do is say, Lord, thank you. I praise you. And lift our hearts up to him. In Romans chapter 12, beginning verse 14, and we'll close with this. Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men with low estates, and other humble yourself. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible. I like that part. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. In other words, if you can't, if it's just impossible, it's not you, it's them. You're trying your best, but they won't allow it, then move. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And let me tell you, as in Hebrews, it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a righteous God. Because God can do things to us that we couldn't even <laughs> do to one another. He will definitely repay. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You see, when we cry to God, he delivers us from all of our problems. Now the problems will still be there, but he equips us. He, he, he equips us with the spirit of God that was able to help us and get through this struggle, no matter what it may be. There are a lot of people who have, have come out of drug addiction and alcoholism and all kind of stuff. All kind of stuff. It's not impossible. And we'll get into those situations and feel like, I just can't do it. Oh, yes, you can. Amen. Testimony. Yes, we can. Well, we can do it with God. We can do it through the power of Jesus Christ. But where have you? Have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Have you realized that you have been bound by iron of sin, guilt, struggle, whatever it may be? Why not get rid of all that and free yourself up and open your heart up to the Word of God and allow Him to come in and help you in all things. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your Word as always. And Lord, if we open up Your invitation you're calling, you're sending out, and Lord, we ask that you encourage anyone and everyone that may need to come forward and make a public proclamation. But Lord, we know that salvation can come right where they're at at this very moment, right there. But then, Lord, what do they do? What's the next step in that, that life of salvation? Well, Lord, they need need to follow you in the example in baptism. And Lord, they need to truly unite with a wonderful, loving, Bible-teaching church and to be equipped, be encouraged and strengthened by brothers and sisters in Christ. But Lord, maybe someone just needs to come up and just have a quick word of prayer. Whatever the need, whatever the call, we're here, Lord, you're here, and may each thing be done through your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to stand and turn to hymn number 563. 563.